Hello and welcome to Raptorform. You may ask yourself, what is Raptorform exactly? Well, it's a platform for anyone who makes their own short videos. It can be made on your smartphone, your handy cam, and you can even edit it on your iPad. Keep watching and you'll see what I'm talking about. This is Raptorform. <laughs> We see what went down at the Red Bull DJ vs DJ Challenge 2015. Next, we check out the first of our newest Raptors, 5678 News. Then we visit an art exhibition at the New Year Art Gallery. And we look at our second group of Raptors, Black Nation, for an exclusive chat. All this and more coming up in the next half hour. My name is Precious, welcome to Raptor Farm, South Africa's original short form video incubator. What is a short form incubator? Well, it's where we breed raptors. Why not check them out for yourself on www.raptorfarm.com. So, raptors are pretty cool personalities that conceptualize, produce, and even upload their own content online. And some of them even generate the material using their smartphones. Pretty cool. Up next, we take a look at the Red Bull Campus Clash DJ vs DJ Challenge. The event took place at the Dorenfontein campus of the University of Johannesburg, and our raptors were there. A cold late July morning greeted the Red Bull Campus Clash DJ vs DJ Challenge at the Dorenfontein campus of the University of Johannesburg. It was not long before the sun came out and the crowd began to form. With much anticipation in the air, the MC for the day, DJ Switch, introduced us to the event. All right, DJs, come forward. So this is the Red Bull Campus Clash. So each DJ has three minutes to rock the crowd. The best DJ wins in terms of their three minutes set. In three, two, one, let's go. It's about to go back. <laughs> Well, we had the finals, the national finals of the Red Bull Campus Clash at DFC Campus. We were lucky enough to have it. And it's always a positive experience for any university to get an event of such magnitude. Like the national final, there were 10 universities that took part in the competition. And we brought them all here, and the turnout was phenomenal. I think there must have been over a thousand people here. Uh, it was great, the DJs really brought it and I had a lot of fun, hope everyone else did as well. Basically this event was to launch or to find the next big thing, DJ on campus. So what we did, we went to the 10 campuses, we had open auditions, 200 DJs must have auditioned in total on all the campuses. And from that there was 8 winners, so to speak, on each campus. Those 8 went into a final on their perspective campuses and then the winner came here to the national final. And it's just such a big stepping stone for a student. You don't know what it's like to be a DJ in a club. Every single winner went to the Red Bull Studios in Cape Town. They learned from Twins on Deck. They learned from Switch. Tools that are priceless in the industry. And yeah, it was just an awesome experience to find that next big thing, hopefully. And then the winner, he's definitely going to Opie Copy next week. I know he's going to definitely play on the soundtrack, Maddie, which is an incredible thing by itself. And in Opie Copy, what bigger stage is there in South Africa? The event culminated in a final of massive proportions, and as in tradition with the DJ vs DJ challenge, the crowd decided who would be the ultimate champion. Okay, my name is Marcel Plainsmith, uh, also known as DJ Chizo. Currently studying at WITS. Uh, I'm actually a 
honors graduate in pharmacology, but I'm currently studying medicine now. Yes. The competition was, was quite tough at first because I didn't know what to expect. I once I played the first two rounds and then I went with the flow and it was cool. Yeah. I ended up winning it. This uh, event, I'm hoping that it kind of boosts, boosts my, uh, my fan base and kind of gets me out there, you know, let more people know who DJ Chizo is and all of that. And also, I hope I can get booked for more gigs, larger events, you know. At the moment, I'm just, you know, riding this wave. I'm going to see where this DJ thing takes me and hopefully it takes me somewhere. Shout out to Red Bull. Thanks a lot for everything and hope to be working with you guys again. Ladies and gentlemen, let's give it up for Chizo one time. Make sure you follow at DJ Chizo with the snake. All right, let's give it up for all our DJs who are competing in the 2015 Red Bull Campus Clash. Wow. Those DJs show for some heat and the crowd were definitely loving it. Well done to Red Bull for another awesome event. Be sure to check Raptor Farm on YouTube. You can see all our inserts in customizable playlists, learn more about our Raptors and become more engaged with everything that is Raptor Farm. Don't hesitate, go online right after a show. Up next, we're going to have a look at 5678 News. They are newest Raptors this week. Check it out. 5678 What's up, what's up? Welcome to 5678 News. Yes, we are back. I'm super excited to be here. This show keeps you up to date with SA's dance industry. I'm Tyler Sparman. This is Keegan Mitchell. And we're going to the screen. Eh? It's really five crew. Bow on the screen. That's where we're from. Okay. <laughs> on today's lineup, we'll be looking at one of Cape Town's biggest hip hop parties, Style of the Week, as well as what's happening happening in SA's dance industry. This party needs no introduction, as the name says it all. We like hip hop brings all Cape Town hip hop elements under one roof. So, you are guaranteed MC battles, DJs, graffiti artists, and much more. So, let's check out what goes down. What's up, hip hop heads? It's Celeste Hip Hop Crazy Mitchell here, and we are back with We Love Hip Hop Volume 3. What's up, hip hop lovers? You know how we do it's miscellaneous. This is We Love Hip Hop. Clap versus hip hop, it's fiction. Yeah. Hip hop music is what started all. The doo wop beat, the deep down low bass, that's what actually did it. There's definitely a great appreciation for both sides of the music. Because music is like the universal language that we can all speak, and I feel like hip hop is the perfect vessel for that. It's all about the beat, it's about that feeling, it's about the truth, it's about the culture. Freedom of expression. Revolutionary. There's no judgment, everyone is different, however, we all come down together. Brings all of us together as people, and we love it. I'm Fashion Time, <laughs> I'm a huge fan, I've been to all three, and this is all hosted by radio personality and TV presenter, Celeste Mitchell, and Cape Town's finest female MC, Miss Selenius. For more information, you can check out the Facebook page, We Love Hip Hop, Twitter handle, at We Love Hip Hop 2, Instagram, We Love Hip Hop CPT. On to Keegan Ritz, on today's style of the week, we'll be looking at Tatin. Tatin originated from the choreography of the 1970s punk band King Boogaloo Tat and Streetscape. After its introduction in the 1970s, Tatin has become a staple of hip hop and gained popularity in the 1990s. Tatin is inspired by angular poses which create geometric movements and yes it's part of the funk styles but we also need to remember that this is a discipline on its own. So now that we got our full of style of the week, let's go on to what's hot and happening. On what's hot and happening, DC Dance Cats is hosting a dance night out for all the kids from the age of 7 to 13. This is all happening on the 7th of August from 6 p.m. till 8 p.m. Parents are more than welcome to just drop off the kids, all chill and enjoy the restaurant. This is all happening at the Morning Hill Country Club in Bruma, Johannesburg. For more information, contact Cam and Owen, or just simply visit their website on www.dcdancecats1 at beep.com. Cape Town Stand Up, RFK is back with another fan fuels 12 Omega. 
This will be happening at Kennan Primary in Lansdowne, Cape Town on the 8th of August and doors open at 12 o'clock and yes guys, it is free. This is a great platform for any dancer that wants to up your rep, meet other dancers or just watch some quiet battles. Yeah. For more information, you can go into the events page, Pamfields 12 Omega. Shout out to RFK. Are we, are we, are we? And I think that's it on our events page. Yeah. To keep up to date with what we're doing, simply follow us on Facebook by liking our page, We Defy Crew, Twitter and Instagram at We Defy Crew 021. Mm. Or if you want to give, if you want us to mention any of your events or classes, you can email us at Redify Crew at Redify Entertainment at gmail.com. <laughs> and I think that's it from us here in studio. This, this is, is another episode of 5678 News. Can you say bring the heat? That was awesome. Well done, guys. I'm really excited to see more from you soon. Hey, don't forget, you can follow Raptor Farm on Twitter using the handle on your screen right now. That's how you can stay informed on what's happening on Raptor Farm. Now, our Raptors were recently at the UJ Art Gallery for the Art in the Time of Democracy exhibition. Let's go see what happened. Uh, the exhibition is called 20, Art in the Time of Democracy. I chose that as the title for the South African leg of the show based on Gabriela Garcia Marquez's Love in the Time of Cholera, because I think it had a nice poetic ring to it. And for me, it was about making a slice of life in South Africa over the last 20 years. It was in uh, Appalachian State University, North Carolina for six months. They had more than 10,000 visitors come through the show. The idea was that the show would come back and the selection would go to China. And then Victoria said, well, any chance we might be able to help sit for a little while, which we did. We managed to get it there for six weeks. And Anneli, who runs the UJ Gallery here, was so excited by the whole show that she changed her schedule to enable the show to be seen in the very city where it originated. The show showcases drawing, painting, printmaking, digital work, a performance piece, video installations, sculpture. A lot of the work has quite a cynical, socio-political kind of content to it. And there's a lot of work that is just about the strides that South Africa has taken as a democracy to be able to be where we are with minimal bloodshed within our kind of context. And no, no better reflected than in the works of the artists that were selected. When I put the show together, I had about six or seven themes running through the Mandela years, the HIV, land and animal rights, um, identity formation, that kind of thing. So I had to try and find works that would tell that story. And that to me was the important thing about it, was telling the South African story. And that was in fact what really blew the Americans away, more than the high quality of the imagery, but the stories that these works told. I was invited about two and a half years ago to go to New York and meet other professors and, and academics in art history from different countries. And uh, one of the people that I met was Professor Ding Ning from Peking University. He actually contacted me the following year to ask if I would be interested in putting together the exhibition for the Beijing Biennale, as they had never had an exhibition from Africa. The decision about the artworks to take was taken in conjunction with Gordon, because Gordon had already been working for about a year on putting together this exhibition that he was taking to America and, and we agreed that it would be a good idea if we would actually select works from this exhibition because the Beijing one was going to be smaller but it did mean that we would already have the crates in place, we would have the collection of artworks to choose from. I wanted them to, to in Beijing to see that, that we could do all sorts of different um, uh, media we could deal with and, and content and everything. I wanted it also to reflect the current state of South Africa in quite a critical way. However, our final selection was censored by the Chinese. And they didn't want anything political. So what, uh, what's quite interesting, some of the ones they've left in, which are very political, they missed the point of them and they've left them in the exhibition. It has had raised eyebrows. 
We did select some of the socio-political work to go to China and it was just vetoed straight out. So anything that was a little bit too politically or in fact um, sexually orientated in some kind of way, they said no thanks. Um, there's a lot of satire that comes in here, there's a lot of social political commentary that comes in on both sides of the tracks, you know, so that it's not just a government bashing exhibition, but it shows the good things, the bad things, the difference in statesmen between the last three presidents, for example. And one of my favourite works on the whole show is a work by Andre Clements, in which he has taken the images of all the presidents of South Africa and overlaid them one on top of the other to make this amorphous, quite soft, velvety image. But if you look carefully, you can see FW's glasses and Tabo and Beckley's little white beard and so on, just peeping through there. And to me, it's quite a clever work because it layers one thing on top of the other to a point that you realise that, in fact, we're all the same. Wow, that show was interesting. Art is such a beautiful universal language and I myself, I love learning it. Still to come on Raptor Farm, we take a seat on the brown couch courtesy of the Black Nation. And then we catch up with Sugar Rush for some more awesome music made by some inspirational artists. Don't go away. Welcome back, you're watching Raptor Farm. Like us on Facebook or follow us using the link below. We'd love to know your opinions on what you're seeing or even ideas on what you think we should cover. Also, how about sending us your content contributions or ideas? Yeah. Next, we checked, which rather we chat to Liam Leffy, the head of content at Live VIP. This is brought to you by Black Nation. Have a peek at it. Hello, hi, my name is Mutwisi Maxwell and you're watching The Couch Interview. And here with me, I have the head of content for Live VIP, Mr. Lee Mulefe. Hey, man. Yeah, how are you doing, sir? Very good, thank you. How yeah. are you, man? So what, what, is a, what is a head of content? Um, you know, head of content is somebody that can not only create content, but, you know, is, is also quite adept or, or needs to be adept at sort of positioning content, you know, mm -hmm. and thinking about how content resonates with an audience, with which audience, mm -hmm. uh, the importance of content, you know, how, how you disseminate content. So, you know, there's, there's the kind of the strategic handling of content is, is, is essentially mm -hmm. what, what makes a great head of content. Do you, do you have to study anything in particular? I, I didn't study for this, mm -hmm. um, not directly anyway, but I think, I think, I think a, a background in journalism, mm -hmm. a background in filmmaking, a background in, in you know, in, in essentially um, sort of a, a storytelling background of any kind, mm -hmm. I think would be, would be very, very helpful. Okay. Um, you know, also depending on how you look at it and depending on where you're, you're focusing, your strength, you know, your, 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 your strengths are, mm -hmm. Um, you know, e even a marketing degree could be very helpful in terms of how you position content, in mm -hmm. terms of how you uh, how you share your content. Mm -hmm. So I think there's a couple of sort of uh, nodes that would be very helpful in, in making one a great head of content. Okay. Uh, but I also think it's a very talent intensive, oh, um, yeah. you know, kind of kind of industry. You know, it's yeah. a very talent intensive place. Yeah. So you guys have a you have a, a campaign going. Um, can you tell me more about it? Because I've noticed on social media there's quite an interest around live. Oh VIP. no, gee, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so we have Live VIP, uh, the, the VIP campaign, as, as, as what it was called before, but now we refer to it as Live VIP. Okay. Uh, Live VIP is, is, is about, essentially, is about young people taking more control or taking over the political agenda. Okay. I think, importantly, more broadly, mm -hmm. you, you want everybody in a society to be actively involved in the politics of their country. Very true. But we focus on young people specifically, mm -hmm. A, because, well, we're young, yeah. uh, and, and B, the largest, you know, young people are the largest demographic in South Africa who yeah. are particularly vulnerable to being excluded yeah. from political conversations okay. because they're young. Yeah. So it's literally, I guess, also about reimagining politics, reimagining wow. how politics, uh, how important politics is to yeah. young people and how important young people yeah. are to politics. And so being able to go, well, what is the political significance of young people in South Africa? Yeah. What is the political significance of how we live our lives in South Africa? Mm. There's an important part that we often overlook in yeah. mainstream political uh, consumption and, and, and production, and that's something the VIP campaign yeah. wants to bridge and gap. How has the youth, you know, like, how, how have they taken the campaign? How have they responded to the campaign? The very first sensation was that myth after myth after myth was busted. Okay. Everything we thought we knew yeah. had to be, we, we had to reconfigure. So the mm. very idea that young people are not, you know, aren't, aren't, aren't politically engaged itself yeah. was kind of smashed yeah. for us, yeah. you know, uh, because of the kind of response that we had. Okay. Um, so, you know, 
I, I think from, you know, from the base that we were coming from, mm -hmm. because of the assumption that young people are not, you know, are politically apathetic, I think the base from which we were coming from and how we were understanding you know, Marcus' success was problematic. Yeah. Yeah. And we, we entirely broke, you know, yeah. you know the, the idea. I mean, we, you know, we've trended about four times, oh. uh, you know, with, with four of our most major events. Okay. Uh, this is literally because, the con because of the content of the yeah. conversations that we have at our events. Mm -hmm. Not because, you know, people are entirely, you know, sharing a picture or talking about a particular thing, yeah. but because people are engaging with each other. People are talking with each other. People are agreeing and disagreeing. Yeah. People are expressing their opinions. Yeah. And that you know that speaks directly to how much hunger there is for political yeah. content. So what's what's the way what's the way forward now? You know, I think I, th I think we want to get a national conversation going. I think we want to have as many people taking part in the com in our conversations as possible, rather than our conversation, the conversation, because it's really something that belongs to everybody. Yeah. Um, so you know, and 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 it's 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 very personal, like you say. Whereas mm. my view of what's going on in South Africa is likely to be very different from the view of somebody. Um, an hour in yeah. any direction from where we're sitting right now. Yeah. Um, however, because I may be in a position of some privilege, because I'm sitting here and I have great cameras around me, I'm sitting <laughs> in the studio, I'm talking to Mutusi, yeah. my viewpoints could be heard a little more. Okay. And so for the VIP campaign, it's about making sure that everybody's viewpoint, oh. um, you know, is 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 is, is part heard. of it. Oh, okay. is, is heard, you know, yeah. and 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 we often have, you know, a large part of our audience is okay. is, is, is is you know pe people like you and I, you know, yeah. as people in, in in urban centers and so yeah. forth. Um, and I think it's very very important that you know we kind of you know look further, mm -hmm. you know, and and. Again, there's, I think there's a lot we don't know about our country. If we can broaden the voices and the conversations that we have, I think right. we can only be better for it. Thank you so much for joining us here at cool, Black man. Nation. Thank you very yeah. much for having me. So there you have it, guys, from Mr. Lee Malefe. You heard it here. Keep it locked. Don't go anywhere. It's Black Nation. That is really empowering. It's so beautiful to see young people taking active control of their worlds. Keeping with our social media, Instagram is the place where you can check out what exactly we're doing here. And uh, we give you a look behind the scenes and we also allow you to feel like a raptor yourself. So we're looking good in that area. Make sure you follow us on Raptor Farm. Now, in this week's Sugar Rush, we catch up with Yolandi. Rooch and Bradley are in studio as well. here is unscripted and unrehearsed. Real people making real music. This is Sugar Rush. Hey. Hey, how's it going? I hear myself singing. Is it raining outside? I'm hearing Very this. loudly. How are you? I'm very good, and you? I'm all right. I can't complain. It's my song driving you crazy. How did you know? I can see the expression, intense expression on your face or something. <laughs> The thing is, your voice is so powerful that the loud parts can easily make our little mic explode. I don't believe that. But then the really intimate parts are so soft and, like, intimate that I can't keep them on the same mic settings okay. as the loud parts. All right. So I've kind of, like, divided the song up into, I think, something like five different sections. Like, the intro is really soft, so we'll turn the mic up. Uh, verse one is a little louder, so I'm turning it a little down. And then when you start yelling towards the key we'll change, I'll turn it way down. Okay. But we have to do that in different takes, so okay. I can like get a mic setting before we start recording. Otherwise, if that thing clips, and like last time it clipped, and then it, the, it starts distorting, and I'm like turning down the gain, and then it's already too late and whatever. So. As long as it doesn't sound, okay, you know, maybe I shouldn't, because you know what you're doing, but I wanted to say as long as it doesn't sound as if, you know, you've been playing with That's the microphone. That's the challenge, like, after you paste these five bits together, then the challenge is to, like, Balance adjust them. the level so that they all sound like they are homogenous, okay. you know what I mean? All right. But it's going to so, be very nice. So I think we should start by um, the, the intro which is really soft, and then I'll stop you just before we get to verse one. All right, so shall we do it now? Yeah, let's do okay. it. That part is too soft, I'll bring it up. Okay, okay. I was actually very unsure there, but... I also don't like that part. What don't you like about it? I don't know, I just, it's not 
very well vocally. Are you just not happy with yourself today? Am I ever happy with myself, Dupree? No, I've never wo ever worked with you when you were actually happy with yourself, but you go through stages of more or less happy, but like today you're less happy. I've never liked my voice, and that's an honest opinion, and I don't want you to think that I'm not happy with the gift that I've been, that have been bestowed on me. Um, I've just always thought that I could do better. We don't want to like just rush to get it done for some reason. Mm -hmm. We want it to, be, to sound nice. So it doesn't matter if you come in 10 times to re-record vocals. I'm cool with that. It's a process. A cup of tea is nice. I don't want the song to be nice. It must be good. OK. OK. No matter how many times I have to come in, I don't know how much time you have here. For this song that I know will be a hit, we'll do it over and over again until it's done. Come, come. Let's go down this road together. <laughs> Yolandi has a great voice, so amazing that she could like make our mic explode. But she second guesses herself and she's never quite happy with what she did and she always wants to redo things. And she's kind of like, she has to learn to let it go and like just shine with that amazing voice. I don't know quite what the problem is, but like we have to get over it. We can't let this song go. If you missed any of the exciting episodes of Sugar Rush, you can catch some of the highlights on sugarrush.com where you also see buttons to follow us on Facebook and Twitter. What amazing voices. Those ladies are real inspirational artists for the youth. Unfortunately guys, it's time to go. Our website is www.raptorfarm.com and that's where you can find more stories, follow, follow any of the raptors and learn more about creating and uploading your own original content. Remember, you can even use your smartphone to generate material. Get shooting! Thanks for watching Raptor Farm. See you same time next week. Goodbye.